All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday, July 2nd. We got a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. We're going to talk about it. I'll give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment for all of my final plays. If you do want to fade me and fade when I'm actually rolling with my favorite plays of the day, keep an eye on the pinned comment. Yesterday, it was an absolute sweat, but we do have a slightly profitable day. Um, we cashed that Astros first five money line with a home run from Pena in the top of the fifth. So, uh, yeah, big time sweat there. They win the first five one to nothing. Um, and that was like the second hit that Yariel Rodriguez let up. So, you know what? We'll take that win. Mackenzie Gore lets us down there. Um, I think he has eight strikeouts through uh, just under six innings. But Lane Thomas has a hit, has a run, and that catches. And then Brandon Nimmo falls in a hotel room, hits his head, and faints. Um, so, yeah, not a good day to bet on him. But obviously he didn't play, so that gets voided. A two-in-one night. We'll take the profit. But what I'm more excited about is we're back in the win column, baby, for the ride of the day. Shout out to B. Belly after I would say three or four days of some L's in the right of the day column. We cash one here. We had Austin Gomber. Um, B. Felly had Austin Gomber over 15 and a half outs. He pitches six innings. Good look there. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, it's where you can get involved with your picks on this show. All you have to do is use hashtag ride of the day in the comments. And I pick one person's pick, just one, jump on board with you and give you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. If you win, we continue to ride with you. So looking forward to seeing what B. Felly throws out in the comments today. And when I say we've been on a ride of the day cold streak, I understand that I'm picking the play. So I know there's a lot of ride of the days that are cashing. I see all the comments like, oh, you should have picked me. I cash this. I know, I know, I get it. Um, but with all the hundreds of comments we get, we got to just pick one. So that's what I mean we're on a cold streak. The one that we were picking, I was somewhat of a jinx. But finally, we cash this one here from B. Felly. So get those hashtag ride of the days in because uh, I want to see who's hot because, you know what, if B. Felly doesn't get one in or, um, you know, we got to ride with someone else, I want to see who's out there. So go ahead and get those hashtags. Hashtag ride of the days in guys if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button and hitting that subscribe button um, appreciate all of the support so far in the MLB season MLB is an absolute grind um, doing these videos and whatnot I mean every single day I say this after a three game slate yesterday but pretty much every single day 15 games we're going through each and every one of them we're traveling a lot this summer because of weddings and pre-planned vacations and whatnot so hit that like button hit that subscribe button uh, free for you guys to do and helps me an absolute crap ton so go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button but let's jump into game number one here we got Cleveland taking on the White Sox not exactly my favorite spot to bet today but I do have a couple or I should say one player prop uh, in this spot out of everything that I don't mind but Cleveland's coming out of losing three of four against KC Chicago won two of three against uh, Colorado and their offense actually looked pretty good and this was in Chicago right not Colorado so give Chicago a little bit of credit there on the mound for Cleveland Carlos Carrasco he puts the ass in Carrasco Going up against Chris Flexen, he <laughs> lets other batters flex on him. But Chris Flexen arguably has been better than Carrasco in his last five starts here. But there's really no argument to be made um, in terms of who is the better offense. That's going to be Cleveland. So in this one, I almost am taking a peek at um, maybe you know both teams saying they're over in, in their team total. Um, I can't really get behind Cleveland minus one and a half. Obviously not money line because of their um, because of their you know, odds here. At minus is 205 so I might split this I don't think this is probably going to stay as a lean but taking Chicago's team total over three and a half or over four and a half then looking at Cleveland's team total over four and a half if you hit both great if you hit one mitigates the loss of the other but a player prop that I'm probably looking at is actually going to be uh, taking a peek here uh, at Andrew Benintendi under one and a half bases. You can see he's hit the under here pretty much every time he doesn't go yard. Um, home runs, those are the two home run games, but under one and a half bases, minus 142 over on Caesars, minus 145 on DK, kind of juice, but he's hit the under in eight of his last 10 games on the season when going up on the uh, against excuse me, on the road, when going up against the righty, he's at the under in 81% of games this year. And what I like to see, you could see, obviously, he does hit righties a little bit better than he does lefties, not all that well. But what I like to see is Carlos Carrasco's main pitch, the slider. Benintendi's WOBA and K-rate both drop against the slider. Uh, K-rate goes up, but that's still a bad thing. And then his third pitch, the changeup, that drops as well. So Andrew Benintendi, under one and a half bases. Like I said, I have a player prop that I'm liking probably more than anything in this spot. That's going to be it. But again, we don't necessarily want to force anything. This isn't 
isn't the best or sexiest of matchups, but that might be a play that we end up rolling with. Ben Attendee under one and a half bases. And real quick, if you guys are interested in that app, you'll see it a couple more times throughout the show. Um, what I'm using to find those stats and the player props and that, you know, green means good, red means bad looking app out there. That's Outlier. I talked to you guys about Outlier plenty in the past. Go ahead and check it out. I'll have a link in the pinned comment. You get seven days free. After that, it's $19.99 per month for everything you just saw in that little snippet there. So it's super, super cheap for what you're getting, but you get seven days free. Go ahead and check it out. It's called Outlier. Link in the pinned comment. No code needed. Just use that link. It comes uh, via the phone, mobile app as well as my favorite here on the desktop because I just like seeing everything all at once um, all on one page all right next game up we have Pittsburgh taking on St. Louis uh, not exactly like I just talked about the last matchup this one ain't all that sexy either um, St. Louis coming off of splitting a series against Cincinnati Pittsburgh losing two of three against Atlanta uh, both teams you know have had their struggles but St. Louis Won seven of their last ten. Uh, they took two of three against Atlanta before that Cincinnati series, and Pittsburgh just lost two of three against Atlanta, if you want to say, you know, uh, same opponent type of thing. Um, but in this spot, I think it's going to come down to the pitching. Mitch Keller's going up against Kyle Gibson, and I do think Mitch Keller has a slight, slight, slight edge here um, overall. He's going to have, I think, four lefties in the lineup, which is kind of his specialty to go against here, uh, whereas Kyle Gibson uh, going up against righties, there's a few different, there's a few more lefties in that, Saint, uh, that Pittsburgh lineup so very very small minute difference there but I am going to give Mitch Keller sort of the the nod in this one and you might be thinking well Mitch Keller uh you know his earned runs over his last five starts have been kind of shaky and super inconsistent and that is definitely true but he's kind of going mass start great start mass start great start mass start and he just ended on a mass start five and two thirds against Cincinnati three earned runs six hits uh six K's but three walks so maybe he's due for a good start if that trend sort of continues neither offense is anything that I'd be uh you know hooting and hollering about here so I think a play that I could also definitely get behind is going to be the under here uh in this spot both bullpens obviously fresh as well. Not that that's a thing to parade about, but St. Louis's bullpen's a little bit better uh, than Pittsburgh. So one thing that I consider, if I do think you know that uh, this is a Pittsburgh spot again, we're kind of backing Mitch Keller, but a player prop that kind of intertwines into that would be Kyle Gibson under 17 and a half outs. Uh, again, just due to the fact that Pittsburgh, uh, excuse me, St. Louis's bullpen's better. I think that they might be more eager to turn to it if needed. And for under 17 and a half outs right now, you can get it at a plus 102 over on Fanduel. So it is a plus money play last time he pitched against them uh he did have 15 outs pitched so well under that number speaking of last time they pitched though mitch keller earlier this year kind of struggled against st louis so hoping for a bounce back spot here but to recap slight lean towards pittsburgh on the money line i like the under as well because i do think uh that both these offenses are just mediocre at best and then a uh, another slight lean towards kyle gibson under 17 and a half outs all right, next up, we got Miami hosting Boston here. Uh, Boston's obviously playing really well. They did lose two of three against San Diego. Um, but prior to that, one of the hotter teams in baseball, whereas Miami has best, just super been, super been up and down, <laughs> as if that's English. Um, on the mound today for Boston's going to be Cutter Crawford going up against uh, Valente Beloso, which is, or Bayozo, which is just a sweet name overall. So you know what? Giving the pitching edge to him. No, I'm just kidding. Um, good one, Evan, right? Uh, but we have uh, Cutter Crawford, obviously the better pitcher in this spot. He has been a little shaky as of late. 3.4 ERA over his last five starts. Now he does have Baltimore, Atlanta, Philly, and New York in there. And then since he was, since he was his last start. So almost willing to give him a little bit of uh, a pass here in this spot. And his last start, I think it was against um, it was Toronto, right? And it got rained out. So he didn't even get to sort of finish the game, but he was looking very, very good. We had him laddered for strikeouts, a small ladder. And today I don't mind almost taking a peek at something similar like that again today, but you're getting really, really bad odds. So I think Cutter Crawford has a good day. Um, I, do, I, I wish I could kind of back him strikeout wise, but I'm more or less thinking Miami Marlins first five team total under depending on what you can get it at. But yeah, this is a Red Sox spot for me overall. Maybe first five run line. Uh, they have the better offense. They have what I'd consider the better pitcher on the mound, even though um, I guess you could say, um, you know, 
Belozo went out there and, and pitched well in his first start last week, but uh, overall, I, I don't necessarily am not afraid of him. Uh, so yeah, I'd take the the first five uh, Red Sox run line if we can get good odds there. Maybe a Miami team total under for the full game, and then in terms of a player prop, we'll head into the outlier screen yet again. Again, guys, link in the pinned comment. Seven days free. I'm liking Connor Wong plus money here, plus 102. Um, you can see it's actually minus 140 on Fanduel, and then plus 100 on every other book, but plus 102 over on. Seizes. Uh, he's hit. A, he's had a single in uh, every single game, other than two games in his last ten. If you want to look at him just to get a hit, I want to. I think it's like minus one six and minus one seventy nine now. So it's a little bit more uh, juiced there overall. So finding a single for plus money, I do like. You could see that Bayozo is going to throw nearly fifty percent fastballs. His woba jumps to three ninety seven. Where he throws the fastball, uh, kind of all over the place. And Wong has a very good uh, sort of pitch uh, disp- uh, like dispensary. I don't know what the word is uh, all over the, the plate, a uh, variety of areas. I'm looking for a word that starts with a D, and I can't think of it because I'm a dummy. Uh, so disposal? Nope, definitely not right. Uh, but dispersion, boom, we nailed it. Um, so overall, I do think this could be a good spot. And again, guys, it's a plus money play. No one's saying this is a lock. I think you just have good value for plus money. So keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if this is going to be uh, a final play for plus money. If, if we can't get it at plus money, that Wong getting a single probably doesn't make its way into being a final play. But yeah, give me the Red Sox some way, shape, or form. Money line, run line for the first five, uh, or taking a peek at Miami's team total under. And then the Connor Wong could be a slight look. And speaking of player props, today is the day to check out Sleeper, guys. They have a George Kirby .5 strikeout square. If you don't know what Sleeper is, I have beat your door down about it because it is by far and away my favorite DFS player prop app out there. You could scroll through all the games. They have tons of lines for every single player. All you have to do is combine two or more plays into a slip. The more you get right, the more you get paid out. You don't even have to get all of them right to get paid out. And what's great is that you'll get this George Kirby .5 strikeout squared today you could throw that in any slip it's obviously going to boost your payout but you also get your first deposit matched if you use the link in the pinned comment i also have a link in the description as well go ahead and check out sleeper guys if you dm me on discord we have a discord in the description as well a screenshot of you signing up for sleeper and depositing with our code today i'm going to pick one person and give you guys uh i'm going to ma- i'm going to match your deposit as well so go ahead and send me the screenshot uh we might take a couple days to do that to field all the 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 DMs, obviously, but yeah, so you might have a double deposit down if you do that today, but obviously with this George Kirby square, go ahead and do that, guys. Sign up for Sleeper today. Use the link in the pinned comment. You're going to get the Kirby square. You're going to get the first deposit matched from Sleeper. You throw in 50, you throw in 100, whatever it is, they will double it, and then you also have a chance to enter me doubling your deposit as well, so essentially, you could triple your deposit. That sounds pretty good, but again, I'm only picking one person, so don't, don't base it on that. Based on the fact that Sleeper is an awesome app, I've used it for years now, go ahead and check it out link in the pinned comment let's get back into these games here I just mentioned the Discord, and I realize I don't talk about the Discord all that much, but we do have a free, completely free Discord. It's not selling picks or anything like that. Completely free Discord of nearly 7,500. Yes, over 7,000 people in that Discord. I'll have a link in the description, guys. Go ahead and join completely free. It's just like a big group chat of like-minded people talking about their bets for the day and everything like that, sharing their winning tickets. So go ahead and find that in the description. I'll bump that link up so it's not very hard to find. But join the Discord again free and it's just a big ass group chat for you guys to talk uh, about all your plays and sort of field it out with a bunch of other people so I know I just talked about doing the giveaway via discord dms but I should probably tell you guys where to find the discord link a little bit more so go ahead and check it out guys I don't promote the discord that much um, but it's an awesome awesome place great community in there all right, Washington taking on the Mets. The Mets battle back here and win 9-7 to yesterday. Um, I say battle back they're down 2-0 and there's just a bunch of runs scored late I think nine runs maybe total in extra innings which is absurd um but overall doesn't really surprise me this Mets team is a tough offense to kind of get out as of right now like they were one of the hottest teams in the league if not the oddest right they've now after that Houston series looked a little bit colder um or during that Houston series I should say uh but still overall today you have DJ Hertz on the mound who has been better at home but still not a guy for Washington that I really want to trust he only has like really one good outing this season it was against Miami um on the mound for the Mets is going to be Sean Manaya, who has looked a little bit better, but still not a trustworthy guy. So I think in this spot, uh, I immediately jump to maybe a Mets team total over. Like, I don't see any reason why they can't get to Hurts. He's going to throw a ton 
ton of fastballs. Mets the fifth best in terms of runs above average against the fastball uh, over the last 30 days. So that's going to be where I lean towards. I, I want to somehow think about betting Mets too, but uh, for whatever reason, like that, I don't want to say it was a lucky win yesterday, but like think about it. You're we're betting on the Mets lately because of their offense. They didn't score all those runs. Like they scored literally six runs in extra innings, three through the first regulation, um, nine. So uh, I don't know. I'm a little worried of it, but I do think that the Mets offense uh, could spark and maybe we get late in the game and that type of thing. But uh, overall, like, you know, Mackenzie Gore kind of had the Mets suppressed for a little while. So to me, uh, this probably stays as a lean, but I do still think there is some value in the Mets team total over. But based on what I've said so far, obviously there's some counters to that thought process. I guess by doing so, uh, Mets team total over, we're, om- we're almost hybriding the idea of Mets money line as well as the total going over. So uh, those are probably my leans on there if I had to dig into that. Um, in terms of what we're looking at, from a player prop perspective, um, I don't mind Joey Manessas here uh, under one and a half bases. He had three yesterday. Not exactly uh, been his trend as of late, right? And what I like here, left-handed pitchers batting 185, extra base hit percentage drops to 20. Um, his ISO drops to .062. Batting average against for Sean Manaya against right-handed batters drops to 218 from 230. He's going to throw the sinker. He hits that well. The slider hits well. The fastball he hits well. Change up he doesn't. Cutter he doesn't, but he barely throws those. So the one thing, or I guess the few things that we're worried about are the top three pitches here for Manaya. but again seeing it out of the righty isn't all that great and again um, not again by the way eight last plate appearances against him batting 143 143 slugging 250 on base percentage only one total base in those eight plate appearances so I think this could be a decent spot as well to target an under in bases prop but uh, we'll see minus 160 kind of a juiced play and like I already mentioned Shaman isn't necessarily this guy that I want to back through and through but Manessis, like after having three bases yesterday, I think he could easily, easily come back down to earth today. I understand that we are taking a while on the first few games, so this could be a long video, slash we will start trying to move it along a little bit here. Um, we got the Yankees taking on Cincinnati. Luis Heel on the mound for the Yanks, going up against Cincinnati's Graham Ashcraft. Uh, the odds speak for themselves here. Minus 205 for the Yankees makes a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, I do think this is a, uh, a Yankee spot. They've also kind of been uh, good against the uh, good against the Reds since, uh, you know, last few years. Seven of the last ten have been won. The Yankees are in a bad spot, though, but they did take two of their last three against Toronto, split the series 2-2, two, two, but two of their last three. Uh, with Heal on the mound, I think and this is a spot to uh, to back him because it should be a bounce-back spot. His last two starts against Baltimore, good offense. Uh, you know, seven earned runs through... I think he only pitched like two innings, something bad, right? And then he pitched up, and then he pitched against the Mets, who were on fire at that point, four and a third, five earned runs. So this should be a nice little deep breath start for him. We'll probably end up rolling with the Yankees if we do bet it, uh, first five run line to try and get some digestible odds, but obviously a pretty tough spot to get some numbers there. In terms of the total, I'm rooting for the Yankees offense. Graham Ashcraft, I don't really love this spot here for him. Uh, So, you know what, go out there and and get some runs. 21 plate appearance against his current roster. These Yankees are batting 368 average against him um, with a WOBA of 466. So, yeah over as well as the Yankees. Keep an eye on the pin comment to see if we find any player props uh, in this spot. None as of right now that are jumping off the page. And like I said, we're going to try and move things along a little bit here because um, we took a long time to break down those first four. All right, Toronto taking on Houston. This is one of our caches. Yesterday we had Houston on the first five money line. Um, still decent odds on either side. You can get Houston for plus 100 right now, uh, money line, uh, due to the fact that Spencer Spaghetti's on the mound, Spencer Arietti. So obviously that's going to be kind of a tough sell, but he is coming off of a decent start, 10 Ks through seven innings against Colorado in his last start. Um, going up against Jose Barrios, who has kind of been a little off the you know rails a little bit as of late, did kind of reel it in in his last start, seven innings pitched, two and runs, eight Ks against the Yankees. So I guess that's good. But prior to that, wasn't really pitching all that well to me this is a tough one because you're looking at a Houston team that definitely doesn't have a start on the mound maybe he builds off of what he did last start but uh, I think you're also kind of getting Houston's offense at a nice price here so um, I don't know if we end up rolling with this uh, overall I I could be honest about that Um, I believe Altuve's back in the lineup but so so should Vladdy both those guys were off yesterday um, or out yesterday I'm gonna take Houston here on the money line just because you're getting plus money again that's plus 100 on ESPN Um, but 
I could see Toronto. Like Toronto has the the, the pitching advantage here in this spot. So uh, maybe we go Houston full game money line because uh, their bullpen should be, I guess, a little bit more rested, even though they pitched yesterday. Not, I wouldn't say totally, totally rested, but this is a terrible Toronto bullpen. So I think that, you know, if we were to roll with Houston, it's got to be full game because uh, let the runs come late. You know what I mean? So we'll keep an eye on that and see if we do want to pull the trigger. But give me Houston as well as, I guess, a slight lean towards the over due to the fact that uh, obviously we're looking at a, a spot in which I want Houston's offense to kind of go out there and score some runs. Yesterday's game was only 3-1. Uh, yeah, give me an over. Maybe both these teams score some more runs today. All right, we got Atlanta taking on San Francisco, and this is a weird one. I'll sound the psycho alert alarm because I'm honestly seeing a little bit of value here for San Francisco, and you're getting them at plus. Let me see. I just had a plus 158 on FanDuel, and the reason I see the value is, well, you're just definitely not getting value on Atlanta here in this spot. Atlanta, um, 50-50 50-50 ball club in their last 10 games, as is San Francisco. But I do think that this could be a spot in which we see these two teams kind of duke it out and battle it out. So if I think this is more 50-50 than it should be, then obviously um, I don't mind the spot for uh, San Francisco and, and the fact that they're getting plus 158. The one concern is there has to be a massive pitching edge here with Ronaldo Lopez going up against Hayden Birdsong, right? Birdsong only has one start under his belt here, and he didn't look all that great um, at all. Uh, there is a few righties in the lineup here for San Francisco, but a decent amount of lefties as well, and Ronaldo Lopez kind of struggles against lefties. Now, not that I'm sitting here being like, because he struggles against lefties, that's the reason we're betting it. Again, the only reason I'm saying that there's value in uh, San Francisco is the price that you're getting, and they just had a good series against the Dodgers. Now, I know the argument's probably going to be, uh, well, they, they get up for Dodger series, and that's how they normally go, but to me, I just can't get to Atlanta minus 180 and beyond. So, yeah, I'll sound it again. Psycho alert alarm. We might be on San Francisco, probably like a quarter unit play, something small, right, if we were to even roll with this um, because it's not like Atlanta's offense is all that stupendous. Um, you know, listen to their last 10 games here. 2-2-6-0-1-6-3-3-3, two, two, six, six, three, 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 and then their 10th most recent game. So 10 games ago, 8. Like, they're not scoring a bunch of runs, um, whereas San Francisco's kind of been giving you a floor of, like, four or five runs, which... Could be okay. But I admit Ronaldo Lopez, obviously the better pitcher here in this spot. So I don't want that to go like I'm ignoring it. But yeah, I could be a little crazy. Uh, Give me that spot. And I think that if San Francisco is to win this game, it's probably, probably an overtype spot. All right, we got Minnesota taking on Detroit here. Detroit, the underdog in this one, depending on what book you look at. Um, but, you know, out of the three, the four main, looks like two of them, Detroit is an underdog. Uh, FanDuel not being one of those. FanDuel has Minnesota as an underdog. But essentially, you're looking at a pick them here. Uh, Detroit's offense is terrible. Minnesota's offense is good. But Tariq Skubal is on the mound for Detroit. And I'm almost so tempted to say, screw the offense. Like, how can we look past uh, Tariq Skubal, right? Like, you're getting him at decent odds. Here, but this is such a bad offense uh, that we're looking at. Like this, this Detroit offense just cannot seem to to catch a break or score a bunch of runs. Um, and I say that with I think they had two their two most recent games were good, but like look before that, like literally one run, zero runs, two runs at max. So maybe they started to figure something out in those last couple games against um, who they play at uh, the Angels. Like I think they scored seven and six runs, but like those are outliers based on what we've seen um, overall. So in this spot, uh, I am going to um, unfortunately kind of lean towards Minnesota. Simone, Simeon Woods Richardson on the mound for them today. Uh, he's a serviceable pitcher, better at home as well, which Minnesota is at home. But this one's killing me because I love backing Tariq. Uh, I just don't know if I can back that Detroit offense. So I'll also lean towards the under. Maybe that's a a fine spot because that allows Tariq to go out there pitch well. Same thing with Woods Richardson. So yeah, give me Minnesota and the under. But I'll tell you, I was this close to going with Detroit. In fact, um, you getting a Cy Young candidate if you are on Detroit today for, you know, minus 104, minus 108, minus 105 odds. I can't knock that whatsoever. So yeah, if that is where you are today I understand it I just I just can't seem to back that offense now player prop that I don't mind here is going to be one that we've been cashing like crazy as of late uh Gio Rochella here under one and a half bases uh Woods Richardson is pitching on the mound today which uh Urshela does fare against righties uh well but overall this has been a guy that just cannot seem to to get many bases nine straight games he's hit the under here 75 percent of games this season when on the road uh he's hit the under in 69 percent when on the road against righties 65 percent so it gets a little bit better but still pretty damning 
I had Texas taking on San Diego, two of my favorite pitchers in the league going up against one another. We have Nate Evaldi on the mound for Texas going up against Dylan Cease. Uh, Texas's offense is in kind of shambles. They did just score double digits against, um, was it Baltimore? Uh, and San Diego's offense is cruising. But maybe this is a psycho play. I'm going to go with the home team and trust Avaldi to have a good uh, day today. Uh, his stats against Texas in the past, or excuse me, against the Padres in the past, the players on the team, not necessarily just the team, but 45 played appearances against, 179 average against, only a Woba of 240. Uh, I don't mind that. Dylan Cease has some good numbers against these Texas Rangers uh, roster guys as well. So uh, I could see this being a game in which one of these pitchers has a good game and the other does not. So I'm also going to lean towards the over without having to pick a side there. You know what I mean? Like maybe of all the, even though I'm trying to back him right now, has a bad game and the Padres offense continues to go um, or vice versa. I know this Texas this offense has been kind of slow this season compared to what we would think they would be, but uh, they have obviously the bats in there. They just, they just scored, what was it, 11 runs against um, Baltimore. So to me, hoping something like that happens, give me Texas as well as the over, but I teeter-tottered on this one, like the last game we talked about, honestly, um, for a while here. So if you're on the Padres, you do have a lot going for you. Cease uh, is probably having a better season than, obviously, uh, Evaldi, and they have the better offense, and you know, both bullpens. I would say San Diego is a better bullpen, but it's not much to brag about because Texas is that bad. Um, but Nate Valdi here at home uh, has just been really good this season. And he's coming off of a bad start against Milwaukee. I'm kind of thinking he uses that to perhaps fire himself up and and kind of go go back into it and, and get in the groove. Whereas you have San Diego, one of Dylan Cease's best starts of the season was his last game against Washington. Seven innings pitched, a one hitter, nine Ks. We backed them in that game, right? So he made us some coin there, but maybe he comes back down comes back down to earth a little bit but either way I'm admitting that I'm on both I like I could see both sides being argued here so you know take what I'm saying with a grain of salt I like both these pitchers both these teams you know definitely could win this game obviously that's why you have odds that are kind of like a pick them in fact, with that being said, I want you guys to let me know in the comments a pitcher that has made you the most money this season. A guy that you see starting and you go, all right, let's back him. Let's figure out a way to back him, whether we take his innings or his team's first five money line, something like that. Who is a starting pitcher this year that has made you some damn coin? I would say for me, Ranger Suarez has to be up there. He has cashed for us so many times, but so is Dylan Cease. And beginning of the year, Nate Evaldi was too. So we got a few here. I'd have to think about that a little bit longer, but um, I know Ranger Suarez is up there. He's probably the one. Um, I'd say it's probably Ranger Suarez, Tanner Houck, Dylan Cease, and I might be forgetting someone. I'd throw Nate Evaldi on the fringe there, but Ranger Suarez probably by far and away. Let me know in the comments what pitcher has been absolutely crushing for you this year, a guy that you know you can trust your money behind and he makes you coin what seems like every single time. All right, Cubs taking on Phillies. We just talked about Ranger Suarez. He's not pitching today, unfortunately. We have Michael Mercado, who I believe only has like one game this season out of the bullpen, one inning. But this was supposed to be Spencer, I believe Spencer Turnbull's start, who as he just comes back, then he gets, or he gets pulled out of the bullpen, he gets hurt. And he was replacing Taiwan Walker. So uh, hopefully this Phillies pitching staff isn't getting too banged up because this is one of my favorite teams in the league to watch. On the other side is Hayden Wesnecki, who I can't really sit here and be like, oh, wow, like what a stud on that side. So to me, I'm looking at this saying, all right, you have a pitcher that, okay, he looked good in his one inning. I'll say that, right? Uh, no earned runs, a .0 whip, like whatever, no hits. Um, but it's a spot in which, you know, like, okay, are we trusting this kid? I'm not sure. But then you could say all the same arguments against Hayden Wesnecki, and it's 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 a guy that we have more data on. So to me, I hate backing guys that are almost no-name type starts and whatnot. Um, but to get the Phillies here at this price today, like I, I really don't seem to mind it. Plus 110 for Phillies on the money line. Sign me the hell up. Um, I want to make sure that their guys are all kind of going and who they have in the lineup. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that. But against righties, don't necessarily mind it, uh, mind it at all. So, yeah, give me Phillies on the money line. We'll definitely keep a close eye on this because even with that pitcher, this line doesn't make all that much sense to me, um, to be completely honest. But that's kind of where I'm uh, heading as of right now. Um, and honestly, this is a guy that's going to throw a bunch of fastballs, 80% fastballs so far. Again, we have like one inning of sample size for this guy. But this is a Cubs team that's bottom 10 in the league and hitting fastballs. So 
maybe it's a good spot. Hell, might be psycho, but give me the Phillies here for plus money. You're still getting the better offense, like um, no question, right? Uh, Phillies offense, I think they kind of struggled against Miami, but they still won two of those three games. But the Cubs offense has been out to lunch as of late. So yeah, give me the Phillies on the money line. I might be missing something here, like one of the big bats out of the lineup. I want to keep an eye on that. Um, is Harper, I, it, it could be it could be a, a level of that too. So uh, I don't have their up-to-date lineup as of right now, but that's probably obviously something to do with this but nonetheless you know if we can get some of those decent bats in there boom marsh like some of those guys try to like those guys starting it could still be a spot in which i say hey screw it it's worth the plus 110 even if we have a couple guys sitting out today uh in terms of the total here yeah i would lean towards the over just because both these pitchers like i'm 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 not saying i would trust uh and say mercado does go out there and get slammed by the cubs offense like i'm already saying i don't think that philly should have trouble scoring you know four or five runs against chicago's starter hayden wesnecki so yeah give me the over in this spot as well but keep an eye on the pin comment for this one because we want to i'm almost like thinking of going to that lineup and scrutinizing this philly's lineup today making sure that we have at least flyer worthy guys in there because if they have some of the bats sitting and this is almost like an off day for them in a sense because of the pitching they don't want to waste guys that type of thing blah 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 we could uh we could pass on it but i don't know maybe i'm the psycho in the room i like philly still Quick cut in here. Yeah, it is due to Harper and, and Schwarber here as well. So two bats, I guess you could say, out of the lineup. But uh, nonetheless, I still do think that Phillies could have some value there. So if you're knocking on the screen being like, dude, Harper, like when I'm talking about, could there be bats out? Because I haven't uh, fully looked into the lineup yet. Those are two bats that are definitely going to be missing today. But uh, I want you to know that I still kind of feel like Philly could win this game. So for what it's worth, maybe I'm crazy but that. I just wanted to cut in and let you guys know. Next up, we got KC taking on Tampa Bay here. We have uh, KC at home, minus 125, which it seems like a almost, I don't want to say a trap because obviously the Royals have had their struggles too, but I do think this Royals team uh, with, I think, Bra- yeah, Brady Singers on the mound too is better than Tampa Bay. So something to note there that I would think this be more in like the, you know, minus 135 range, which I, maybe we're splitting hairs there. But I guess you could say Tampa Bay is playing good baseball. They've won seven of their last 10, um, but I'm going to lean towards Kansas City here. They uh, they should have the better bullpen marginally. They do have the better pitcher. Brady Singer's been very good at home. Um, the one thing is that both these offenses are kind Kind of just okay, right? Uh, but I'm going to think that this one's going up and over if they think that the Rays uh, are going to compete in this one. You have Lytell on the mound for the Rays and Brady Singer on the mound for Kansas City. Neither one of these pitchers have been absolutely dominant uh, this season. But again, Brady Singer has been pretty good both recently and at home. So uh, yeah, a little a little worrisome there if you are um, you know taking it over. But I think both these bats could get going here. Um, and I'm kind of using that just by saying that, okay, well, they think Tampa Bay is going to be in this game. That means that their offense isn't going to be mute you know what I mean so give me the over in this spot as well all right we got Colorado taking on Milwaukee here Colorado only plus 105 in this spot they have Ryan Feltner on the mound going up against Dallas Keuchel that's most likely where these odds are coming from um, due to the fact that Keuchel had one start the season didn't look all that great um, he did have an expected FIP way better than his FIP his FIP was 8.4 expected FIP at 3.4 so take that for what it's worth and Ryan Feltner has been pretty bad um, obviously this season so I think you're getting a pretty damn good price for Milwaukee here um, I lean them yesterday and they're what minus 140 something so yeah give me milwaukee here on the money line for minus 120 could be a spot uh in which we consider now the total sitting at 11 and a half um probably silly to lean towards and under uh overall in terms of uh you know being in colorado with what i would consider a good milwaukee lineup here and dallas keigel who obviously has had some struggles as of late so i'll lean towards the over but milwaukee money line definitely could be a final play for me today it's just like can we trust keigel i'm not sure but i think milwaukee's off we can trust over Colorado's even though yesterday they lost bounce back spot as well I kind of think that kind of helps all right Oakland taking on the Angels not gonna lie this is probably one that we don't want to spend too too much time on I'll lean towards the Angels you're getting a decent price they've been playing I guess better baseball you could say than Oakland um and honestly they've won what like six or seven of their last 10 I think actually um beating Detroit three of the four like sure give me the Angels here Jose Soriano's on the mound for them so I think this probably stays as a lean but he hasn't been terrible on the road if you want to take this and run with it uh he's going up against Mitch Spence who kind of has just been uh, a middle of the road guy he's gonna have some bad starts but he's also has some good starts mixed in I'm not gonna lie but his last start was against um this Oakland team and he went five and a third one home run six earned run 
runs on eight hits. So, uh, yeah, I think the Angels could get him, and you're getting a good price tag here. In terms of the total, I'll lean towards the under because though we have two pitchers that can definitely get got today, uh, there is a worry with the bats overall, right? So, yeah, give me the under in this spot as well. But come on, look at all the games and all the value we could find. Are we really betting Oakland and the Angels? Come on. But speaking of bad games, let's move on to a good game. We have George Kirby and the Mariners taking on the Orioles here and Grayson Rodriguez. I think it's going to be a very good game. The total's down at seven and a half. Um, and yeah, I like George Kirby here. He's obviously the free square from Sleeper, so make sure to go check out Sleeper. This Baltimore team has kind of been, I don't want to say struggling. In their last 10, they've been struggling. But then they've won four of their last five. Seattle has definitely, you can make the argument, been struggling, just not stringing anything consistently together. But uh, when George Kirby pitches, he's been out absolutely lights out they are four and one as a team in his last five starts he's got a 1.2 era in his last five starts and at home he has been dominant so i can't help but take a peek at george kirby here um to have a good day and good night uh overall this has been a guy that has just been pitching pitching really really well at home um in fact if we look at his season at home over on outlier you could see his earned runs here right this is it. He has one game in which he allowed more than two earned runs on the season. Last time he pitched against uh, Baltimore was back in May. He did allow five, but that was in Baltimore. So a uh, play that I don't mind is George Kirby under two and a half earned runs. And by doing so, I'm not necessarily trying to tell you that, uh, you know, Seattle wins this game. Um, I still think that this is probably a, a pick em at best, which obviously the odds would indicate that as well. So I'm actually going to lean towards an under as my uh, main play, but maybe even considering more or less a first five under between these two teams as my main play. If I had a gun to my head and had to pick uh, a side here, Seattle's been a pretty damn good home team, and I think that they have a slight pitching advantage. So I'll lean Seattle, but man, I, I don't want to fade this Orioles team uh, in this spot whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Uh, first five under under is most likely my favorite spot here. I want both pitchers to be able to go out there um, and pitch pretty well. And for a first five under right now, under four and a half, you can get it at minus 140 on ESPN bet, minus 150 on Caesars. Like this could be uh, a decent spot overall to take that. You're paying a little bit of juice, but I think that it's worth it with two good studs on the mound. And honestly, I don't necessarily mind, like, if you're looking at the full game, I'm not taking full game over. I think both these teams, uh, you know, or I sh Baltimore especially could score late in this game. So uh, I wouldn't go full game under at all. Like, I think that first five under and full game under are two separate, completely separate bets today. So FYI there. And also a decent chance for Nerfy as well, now that I'm thinking about it with these two pitchers on the mound. So there could be some serious action in this game. Keep an eye on the pinned comment. All right, last game up, we got the Dodgers taking on Arizona. Right now, Dodgers pretty damn heavily favored, which I think it makes a little bit of sense. Bobby Miller going up against Ryan Nelson here. Obviously, Ryan Nelson uh, has had plenty of struggles this season. He's also had some spots in which he's looked okay, but nothing that I could ever truly like get behind, right? So this is probably a Dodgers or, or pass type spot for me overall. Um, Arizona's offense has looked okay as well, so if you want to take a swing for the over, sure, but I expect this to be a Bobby Miller uh, kind of get comfortable spot here, because ever since coming back from the injury, uh, he's kind of had his, his issues, right? You know, two straight starts of not looking all that great, but again, Ryan Nelson had a couple starts in a row, and then right back to bases against, uh, against Minnesota, which is a good offense, so I'm thinking the Dodgers get to him as well so Dodgers money line maybe in some sort of a parlay but I don't mind the over hoping Dodgers carry their weight and maybe Bobby Miller still has kind of a shaky-esque type of a start but guys that is going to wrap for today's show hope you guys did enjoy if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button um quick rant here comment rant if you made it this far into the video uh i know that we and i, I you guys tell me the the real ones and the supporters uh tell me not to pay attention to these types of comments and whatnot but it's not necessarily that i'm letting it get to me it's that i acknowledge all comments good hate bad ugly whatever because it's all a community and you're not gonna make everyone happy right one thing we're still getting is stop bet stop giving picks for every single game you saw like I want to talk about every single game. That part of the show, for now at least, is not going to change unless we're on vacation. I love going through each and every slate and giving my thoughts and having my opinion matter to two people out there. Do you know what I mean? So that's not going to stop. But if you really are concerned with the fact that we're giving picks on every single game, uh, one, maybe it's not the channel for you, or two, like look at the pinned comment. That's where I'm literally giving you my like four to six plays for the day, that type of thing. Like, 
probably not even talking to the right people because if you're mad that I go through every single game, you're not making it at this point. But I just wanted to let everyone know that like that part isn't changing. I think that that's what separates us from a lot of other channels out there because um, when we're on vacation, like there's a reason why we do the quote unquote easier type video when on vacation, right? Because we can find two to four plays per day and roll it out. But I love the grind of every single game and everything like that. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that quick rant. I understand that if you got, if you're watching right now, you love that about the show as well. So consider it reinforced that at least for now, um, based on our schedule as of right now, like I still want to go through each and every game uh, unless we are traveling and don't have time to do that. But nonetheless, guys, that's all for me. Quick rant there. We'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Peace out.